Welcome everybody to this presentation about ACCESS, the assistive course creation and evaluation of student submissions tool. This is a tool that we designed and implemented um, in our master project here at the University of Zurich and I'm pretty excited about it so this is why I wanted to make this video real quick. Um, what is it about? This is basically a, a tool that allows us to automatically grade student submissions. So the context was that we have this course here at the university um, that we were expecting around 500 students or a max of 500 students. Um, we wanted a system that instead of tutors um, grading those submissions that automatically grades those student submissions through unit tests um, and then provides the student with instant feedback about their work and their code and the grading that they receive. Um, we wanted the students to still be able to develop locally and write this Python code uh, the solutions on their local IDE or use our online editor. Um, but still we wanted the system to be generic enough to support more students or have different types like um, multiple choice tests that we implemented or single choice tests. And we also wanted it to be extendable like this course uh, was in Python but this is why I use the code runner for Python, but we also can extend it with like for C or Java just by changing the, the code runner in the back, back end. Um, we also, we had some requirements that we needed to fulfill or that we said we wanted for this application to run. Uh, we wanted different roles like the students, the course creators um, that provide the content through Git uh, we wanted it to be integrated with Git so the course creator can just simply work on their code and publish the exercises just through Git and our system would in the background automatically uh, update and fetch those changes uh, through those Git webhooks. Um, and we also needed to take care about authentication and that the student data of course doesn't leave the, the university but stays on, this, uh, on these servers. Um, the, the interesting or the exciting part about this, our, our system is actually being used right now. It's, it's live in production. Um, we have those like 450 students working their uh, weekly exercises with it. We have run um, already about 150,000 student code submissions that we locally run and spun up our Docker containers. Um, but I will talk a little bit about it. Here we see just the architecture of our app that we made. Um, so if you connect through the browser, you get to our engine X front end and reverse proxy first. Um, if you haven't uh, authenticated yet, you will be redirected to our identity provider where we uh, integrated Keycloak. Um, so, you, so you register or you log in and then you get to the uh, course data. For this we have uh, our Spring Boot application in the backend um, which fetches the course from the Git repository. So every course has its own Git repository and then through webhooks it's connected to get all the relevant information that we then use to um, display in the front end that we built with React. Um, we also fetch the, the submissions for this we have a MongoDB where we store all the student submissions and um, we also have a, a code runner so every time a student submits his code we um, spin up a docker container just with this code for the code execution. We execute the student code against a unit tests, a test suite and according to how many tests um, the code passed, the student will receive the according grading. So this is how our application is, is built up and is running in the background. Uh, we, I will demonstrate it uh, maybe right now in the front end. Um, here, let me show real quick first. Yeah, no, I'll show it. Um, here we see I've logged in as, as myself. And so we see the courses. Um, here I will just go into the mock course that we just made for demonstration purposes, um, introduction to Python and then the first task. And here we see there is normally a description file um, that tells us about the exercise. We can also integrate like images and this is mostly through markup language. Um, we see the different exercises. We have the script 
with um, the integrated Monaco editor that you can use here um, to change things. We can print stuff, we can add code and um, we can run this code and test this code. Uh, so a Docker container will now be spun up in the background and execute this code and then will give us some, some output. Um, first is the test output. That's the one where it compares the code against the public test suite here. And we will also receive some console output like, like we just defined. Um, and we see all the test runs here. We, we can load old versions um, that have less, less code in it. And then we also have our submits. I already made the submission. Um, I received the score of 8.5, but I could also um, hmm, remove some code here and then make another submission. And now there, there will be um, the code executed against the private test suite that the student doesn't see on our server. And then we receive the uh, grading again. You see I, I received less grades <coughs> or a l less score than I did before. But this is all um, in the background. Like I said already before, this whole interface here is built with uh, React. Um, <clears throat> what for for this to run like I already showed the architecture you can see um, I have docker running up here we have Postgres database this is for for the key clock service here and then our Mongo database for storing all the submissions that that a student made then an email server you can see here the the boot boot spring backend running and then the front end too um, what also was interesting is we, we had a few challenges that we tackled. Um, just to, to mention a few, like onboarding, how, how the students, how do we register the students? How do they um, get into our system, like file system virtualization? So like, how do we represent everything and how do we store like all the submissions in, in our system and retrieve it and everything? And um, one of this was a submission and versioning this was uh, one of the challenges. Uh, let me explain it here. Let's say that the, the course creator uh, published an exercise, right? Made a git push and our um, system fetches those exercises. And then we see there was a student that submitted code, maybe another student or the same student submitted another solution and then another solution and uh, received a grade. But then, like let's say two days later, a, a course creator um, recognized that something was unclear or that there was an error in his own code or uh, something in the test suite and makes another push. So there is another exercise version. And so one, one of the big challenges that we had to tackle is all those student code submissions that were to a later version how did they compare to the to the new version, right? Did the course creator simply change some text in the description or did he make like a major code change that the old submissions aren't compatible anymore? Uh, we, we then call this a, a breaking change. So we, ne we needed to find a way to deal with, um, with this whole story. And the whole premise of this uh, challenge slide is just to say, uh, well, you know, there were some challenges that we had like that we needed to put a lot of effort in it to, f to come up with a solution to, to find a way to think about it and to make a good design like just uh, another example would also be the code execution right this is the we're we're actually executing unsafe code like <clears throat> we don't know what is in this code and who tries to access what resource with those codes so we needed to find a way to safely execute this code uh, in on in our server here at UCH, um, but that cannot be um, misused, and so we we came up with with Docker sandboxed environments um, <clears throat> that we try to at least contain it a little bit. But th those are just some of the challenges we run into. Um, but of course, we also tested our system. Here is a little ben benchmark that we did once with Gatling. Um, we simply submitted like within a one minute time frame <clears throat> you can see it um, around 850 requests 
um, requests, meaning that this simulates that 150 users would all submit code, which spins up Docker containers and execute this code on our server, comparing it against test suites. Um, and out of those 850, um, like those around 700 were successfully executed and uh, received the corresponding grading. So um, for the current context of like max 500 students for this course, our system is really reliable. Um, the on-site server that we have in production right now is actually uh, more powerful than what we tested here. And of course, our system is also like extendable. We, we can employ more more servers, more more databases, more uh, uh, front end. So this this all is scalable. <clears throat> so there should be no problem with scalability. Um, then all of this is uh, we made it all open source. You can find this repository. Um, don't know maybe if the name changes or stays the same, but it's all open source. If you want to find it, you can find it. Um, we have all the repositories that are needed, the back and front end, and the infrastructure simply contains, like uh, like I've shown here, um, with this corresponding command, you can spin up all the Docker containers that you need for um, local production. If you if you like the tool, if you want to use it, if you actually want to adapt it, if you want to make pull requests or anything like that, like the, the code is all open source. Um, we have some template courses like you see here. Um, this is all in the background. Um, you could see from the config files how such a course is configured um, with the corresponding exercises. And then this should simply demonstrate how easy it is to set up a course uh, with the corresponding files. And then you just push it and our system will automatically in the background integrate it. So um, as a course creator, maintaining those files and maintaining your course should be um, pretty simple. Um, yes, that was it about our awesome tool that's a life in use, life in production. It's, I'm just super excited about it. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.